Assalamu alaikum students and a very good morning to all of you. Hope all of you are doing great. So kids, welcome again to the class. As you all know, my name is Nida Sahar and I am your social studies teacher. So dear students, as you all know that we had started our chapter 8 cities and villages. In today's lecture, I am going to review the points that we had previously discussed and I am sure all of you remember the points that we had discussed in this chapter. So kids, we had talked about settlements, we had talked about city life, cities in Pakistan, village life, village life in Pakistan. We also had discussed what is meant by environment and we had discussed the 3 R principle. So let's begin with the review. So kids here is the page from your book. This is page 66. I have highlighted the main points and I am also going to read the chapter. So let's start cities and villages. Thousands of years ago, there were no cities. People lived in small communities or settlements. They chose a safe place where, they, where there was water and where there was enough food. In some places, a rich and powerful person became the king or ruler. A king often built a palace or a fort. The king usually had many servants and a huge army. All the people who worked for him needed homes and food to eat. Soon more people came to settle close to the king and more houses were built. There were also great markets and bazaars where traders and farmers came with their goods and produce and where they and where craftsmen set up their workshops soon these places grew so big that they became cities thousands of years ago mohenjo-daro was a busy city today only the ruins of this city can be seen okay so what is meant by settlement settlement refers to the action of people coming together to live in an area. Settlement is a general term used in geography, history and other subjects for a place where people live. And which area they choose to live? They choose a safe place where there was water and where there was enough food and where there were enough resources for survival. So settlements refer to the action of people coming together to live. And in those settlements, a rich or a powerful person became the king or a ruler. And a king usually uh, built a palace or a fort where they live. The king usually had many servants and a huge army. All the people who worked for the king needed homes and food to eat. Soon more people came to settle close to the king and more houses were built. More markets and bazaars were built where traders and farmers came up with their goods and where other craftsmen set up their workshops. Soon these places became so grew so big that they became cities. Now on page 67, cities in Pakistan. There are now thousands of large towns and cities in the world. In Pakistan too, there are many towns and cities. Each province has a capital city where the government has its offices. The capital city is also the place where most of the business of the province goes on. 
for example Sindh is is a province and Karachi is its capital on the map you can see the cities in large towns of Pakistan some cities are called industrial cities in these cities there are usually many factories so kids which cities are called industrial cities where there are many factories are called industrial cities and the factories produce goods that are sold there are a lot of jobs in factories industry is an important because it generates money provide jobs and helps the economy it's as we are talking about the city life in pakistan there are many towns and cities each province has a capital city where the government has its offices some cities are called industrial cities because in these cities there are many factories and these there are different types of factories which produces goods that are being sold there are lots of jobs in the factories for deliveries and for other purposes industry is a, is important because it generates money it provides jobs to many people and it helps the economy right so pakistan has many industrial cities and what are industrial cities industrial cities are those cities in which there are many factories which produces goods clear okay now we are going to talk about villages the population of pakistan is over 207 million out of every 100 people in pakistan 60 live in villages and 40 live in cities and towns to know how many people there are in a country the government carries out a census this is a counting exercise that tells us how many people there are in and what age groups what work they do etc the census helped the government to plan for the future a village in pakistan have you ever visited a village do you know what life is like there life in a village is simple and quiet it is very different from life in a city there are not so many people in a village there is hardly any traffic cereal crops and vegetables are grown around the villages there are orchards where fruit is grown okay that's how a village life looks like how peaceful and soothing their houses are small usually made up of mud there is very little traffic over there there are small roads there is less pollution over there we get fresh air because there is too much greenery in villages there are too many plants and crops in the villages the water comes from river canals and tube wells most of the villagers are farmer and they work in field some of the villagers have skills to make things out of wood or metal some villagers are blacksmiths carpenters cobblers and there are those who can build houses some people mostly women make things like baskets ornaments beautiful shawls and carpets and they do traditional embroidery in most villages there is a mosque and uh, a small school the larger villages have high school and a post office and some shops in villages there are no parks or zoos sometimes the villagers come together when there is a festival
okay as we are talking about the village life here is a page from your book the water comes from river canals and tube wells here you can see the agricultural land and here you can see the tube well most of the villagers are farmer and work in fields even the women and children help on the farm some people may find a job in a factory nearby some of the villagers have skills to make things out of wood or metal there are blacksmiths carpenters potters and cobblers and there are those who can build houses and mantla and carts some people mostly women make things like baskets ornaments beautiful shawls and carpets and do traditional embroidery in villages there is a small mosque and a small school the larger villages have a high school and a post office and some shops there may be a clinic or dispensary where basic medical help is available but there are no hospitals in the village there are no libraries or museums in villages there are no parks or zoos either sometimes the villagers come together when there is a festival here you can see there is a picture from a village fair where you can see the dancing horse a dancing horse at a village fair so kids as we are talking about the village life do you ever wonder what kind of food villagers like to eat they eat less spicy simple pure and fresh food they like to eat different kinds of rotis which are made up of different grains like maize millet oats right they like to eat different kinds of leaves like mustard leaves spinach leaves they eat less spicy meals they like to eat simple and fresh and pure food they eat uh they eat they eat pure and fresh yogurt they like to drink lassi which is a very common drink in villages so basically they like to eat less spicy simple pure and fresh food so kids here is the page from your book this is page 71 I have highlighted the main points and I'm also going to read it. Our environment. The area in which something exists or lives is called its environment. As such everything in the world around us which can affect our lives is part of our environment. Whether we live in small towns big cities or villages we must keep our surroundings clean so that the environment is clean and healthy and how do how can we do this how can we make our environment clean we can do this by following the 3r principle which means reduce reuse and recycle now first reduce reduce means not wasting anything whether it is food water or paper we should use things only as much as we need and not waste resources reuse reuse means as it says to use something again instead of simply throwing it away you could reuse glass bottles cardboard boxes and cloth bags over and over again now on page 72 recycle recycle means changing a used object to make a new one for example aluminum cans can be recycled to make other aluminum items can you think of more materials that can be recycled so this is the 3r principle reduce reuse 
and recycle let's discuss this 3r principle in detail okay before getting into 3r principle first we should know what is an environment the environment is actually everything around us all our surroundings including the air soil water plants and animals make up the environment plants and animals and also human beings need a healthy environment to survive and how can we make our environment clean and healthy we should follow the 3r principle and what is 3r principle reuse reduce reduce reuse and recycle now we are going to discuss the 3r principle to make our environment clean and healthy here is a 3r principle or rule these 3r stands for reduce reuse and recycle reduce means reduce the amount of materials you use which reduces the amount of waste you create reduce means not wasting anything we should use things only as much as we need to and not waste resources reuse as its name indicates when you refuse to reuse its our earth you abuse just think before you bin it there could be some use in it reuse means to use something again instead of simply throwing it away we could reuse glass bottles cardboard boxes and cloth bags over and over again now the third r stands for recycle recycle means changing a used a uh, changing a used object to make a new one paper bottles plastic cans they all can be recycled take a stand recycle the present and save the future it's being it's it is easy being green reduce reuse and recycle if we follow this principle if we follow the 3 r's rule it's easy to clean to make the environment clean and healthy okay students now it's time to discuss book exercises with you on page 73 there is exercise a complete the following fact file about the cities of pakistan you have to write the you have to complete this file which is about the cities of pakistan okay first pakistan's capital city you have to write the capital city of pakistan that is islamabad now provincial capitals sindh the provincial capital of sindh is karachi balochistan the provincial capital of balochistan is quetta punjab the provincial capital of punjab is lahore and khyber pakhtunkhwa the provincial capital of kpk is peshawar other facts a city famous for sports court sialkot is the city that is famous for its sports court a city in the punjab famous for its industry that is faisalabad the largest city of pakistan karachi another city in punjab famous for its shrines multan the port city it is also karachi gilgit baltistan main city gilgit right now on page 73 exercise b each country has a capital city match the following capitals with their countries right so here you have to match the capital cities with their country 
ओके लंदन लंदन इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ यूनाइटेड किंगडम न्यू डेली न्यू डेली इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ इंडिया काबुल काबुल इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ अफगानिस्तान वाशिंगटन डी सी इट इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका कोलम्बो कोलम्बो इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ श्रीलंका टोक्यो टोक्यो इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ जापान तेहरान तेहरान इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ ईरान पेरिस पेरिस इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ फ्रांस रियाद रियाद इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ सऊदी अरेबिया एंड द लास्ट वन कायरो कायरो इज द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ इजिप्ट क्लियर okay kids now it's your turn you have to read the chapter thoroughly and i'm sure you have already highlighted the main points okay and i'm sure after watching this video you would be able to answer the following questions what is an environment what is the 3r principle and why it is important can you define reduce reuse and recycle can you tell the provincial capitals of punjab sindh balochistan and kpk where did people start the first settlements can you tell what an industrial city is which is the largest city in your province describe the work that most villagers do name the services villagers do not have where do kings live what kind of food do villagers eat can you tell the capital cities of uk usa ksa france and sri lanka so kids that is all for the today's lecture and i'm sure everything is well understood i'm going to see you in the next class till then all of you study hard take care and allah hafiz and keep smiling